What's up, Burger Boys and Gals? Here at Fretboard Brewing Company. Uh, I've actually never been here before, so really curious to see how it goes. Uh, meeting with the owner, Jim Klosterman. Let's figure out more about this event going on this Sunday for Unlimited Burgers. Let's check it. What's up, Burger Boys and Gals? Burger Boy Royce here with fellow LaSalle grad. I know, it's awesome. Jim Klosterman. And drama. And drama. Uh, yeah. LSD, yeah. not the drug, <laughs> but LaSalle drama. We're going to tag all these people in it. We're going to get so much engagement from LaSalle alum. I love it. I love it, too. But we are sitting here not only with a LaSalle grad, but one of the founders and owners of Fretboard Brewing Company, Jim Klosterman. How's it going today? It's going good, yeah. Just busy, yeah, a little, little tired. We had a big event this week. Yeah. America's Best Brew Band. Mm -hmm. So we had, uh, last few weeks, we had all the bands compete against one another uh, that are members of breweries. Yeah. And then, so we had semi-final rounds on the last couple Thursdays, and then this past Wednesday, we did our final. I hear and you're so, part of a band as well. Yes. So were yes. you a contestant in your own event? Yes, yes. So we made it. We made it to the finals. I think we probably placed third out of the four bands. Okay, okay. Uh, as far as the rankings are concerned, uh, but, you know, we did, we had a hell of a fun time. What kind of band, like, yeah, what kind so. of music are they playing? Like, classic rock, or is it originals? You know, you know two of the bands played originals. So Darkness competed in it. They did, they did originals. Uh, those guys were just, uh, they were fantastic. Yeah. Um, they did this, like, I don't know what you call it, like, like folk rock. I, I don't even know what it, like, <laughs> punk. <laughs> folk rock. So, yeah, I've heard they, some of that stuff before, but, it, yeah. It was, it was fun. And then um, Urban Artifact, I mean, they just, they blew the doors off. They were unbelievable. So they Yeah, had, for sure. I mean. And those guys all work at, a, at, at Urban Artifact except for the one, the drummer, but I mean, the four piece, they were incredible. And so they sounded like they, you know, I kind of compared them to Clutch. Yeah. If you ever, ever listened to Clutch play, but. Um, I haven't, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm not that cultured, it's, uh, you know? it, it's pretty uh, he heavy rock and uh, spoken word all mixed into one. So it's just, uh, it's, well, I mean, it's fun. It, it makes sense too that you're having that one. And you can tell me a little bit more about the story of Fretboard, why you wanted to be Fretboard. Yep. But like, look, if you guys have ever been here, it is literally like a venue, <laughs> a music venue. That's you know, I, there, there's that's a what huge we want stage yep. and all that stuff. So yep. it, it's a party time, whether you like beer or not. I think um, well, that's, we, we serve wine now. If you don't like beer, so, okay, yeah. wine. Yeah, for all you wine kind of sorters, yeah. I think he's out, right? Yeah, there's, <laughs> there, there were many people that come in. Well, I don't drink beer. I'm like, well, I, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with you. No, now, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now, I'm just kidding. My, my sister, my sister, like she doesn't drink beer anymore because she's, you know, she's gluten free. So she's gotcha. like, when you get wine, when you get wine, because you get those ciders. Yeah. So cider was the other option. Yeah. We just. We just never got into it, right? So you don't you don't have any ciders? No, we did it. We did we did uh we did a little bit of work with it. We did a it was actually a pear cider, which is really doesn't make sense because pear is not cider, but they call it mm -hmm. pear cider. So it was a pear based um, uh, beverage, and it's actually considered fruit wine. So we we dabbled in that a little bit. We might bring that back out. So that was that was kind of cool. Interesting. So stuff. it was. Cool. I'm not really a fruit guy. I like yeah. I'm like a middle ground. I don't like the the fruitier you know drinks or beers even. Sure. But I don't like something too thick and too, too, too bitter, right? Sure. So I'm drinking, what's it called, the Mellow Ship? Mellow Ship, yeah. You know, uh, uh, a, a fine Pilsner, you know, and I don't, I don't want to promote uh, Miller Lite or anything <laughs> like that, but. Uh. Well, and that's just the style of beer, right? So I think maybe, you know, Miller made that famous because yeah. it was the fine Pilsner reference or whatever. But, but it is yeah, fine. It's, it's nice. That's actually I, just I really a enjoy it. traditional German style beer. Um, but this has a little bit more hops and characteristics. What are you drinking? Too. Mellowship as you're, well. You're drinking Mellowship as well. Yeah, yeah it's kind it. of our brewery go-to. I don't know if it's because we're we're geeky about it, but it's it um it it kind of has a smell of an IPA, but it doesn't finish like an IPA, real mm -hmm. bitter like that. It finishes real smooth. So that's that is one we can year round. In I six love packs. it. <laughs> I, I I love how we're bouncing back and forth on topics of conversations. Maybe it's just that Lasallian blood in us, it's, and we just it's like it's a getting, drama thing. Yeah, so, it's, yeah, it's well, gonna, well, I was going to ask gonna, you. It's so going to skip around. Was being in something like Lasalle drama growing up was that somewhat of an inspiration to get you involved into playing guitar or you know this the fretboard the the venue mindset? You know, I I would say I would say anytime you can be on stage and and perform that helps. But I would. I started playing guitar when I was 10, so I watched my brothers, you know, grow up at mm -hmm. LaSalle. They were also in drama. So I always wanted, you know, when you got big brothers like that, you want to be like them when you're when you're yeah. a kid. So 
I went at playing music hardcore. So I mean, I formed a band by sophomore year. We had a we had a band. Were they all LSL guys? Yeah, yeah. LSL. What, what was your band called? So, oh, jeez, old Pete. I don't know. I think we called ourselves the Toxic Babies. The Toxic Babies. <laughs> Something like that. Might uh, might have to add that up to <laughs> me and my friends have a running list of just horrible band names. Oh, we had a, we had a few. I can't I can't talk about them on camera. <laughs> One of my favorites of ours is it's just called Bleach in a Bendy Straw. <laughs> so, like, you know, we, it just, obscure band names. Like, do, you, it, do you play? No, no. Oh, I, so. I play voice is all. You okay, know, so I, you're I still, a singer. I, I okay. still, yeah, I still do theater on the side, uh, a little bit at um, the Incline Theater on yeah. the west side oh, and cool. the Covedale. Cool. Uh, sometimes here and there at the Carnegie as well in Northern Kentucky. So, sure. shout out to all those theaters, you know. Yes. Uh, no, you anyway, go support him, please. Anyway, so tell me a little bit about the story of Fretboard and really what got you into craft beer and what got you into, you know what, let's open our own brew. Yeah, I, I would say, I mean, we were playing in, in a band. Um, if anybody out there in LaSalle land obviously knows, knows me and knows our mm -hmm. group and partners um, and our friends, I mean, they, they'll know that we played in a band for 10 years. Part of playing in a band, we would, we would drink and seek out craft beer. Now, don't get me wrong, we had those terrible dom domestic beers that we would drink all the time, no offense, but it was like, mm -hmm. I mean, we drank some really bad stuff back oh, in the day. I love good but, old domestic uh, yeah, beers. Yeah, it PBR was like. PBR is one of my favorites. No, I like, I, <laughs> I like the PBR. Hey, um, you, you you know, gotta, Jim, Jim, they don't give blue ribbons out to you, everybody. You, you gotta, you gotta it's have. It's an award-winning beer. You gotta drink a PBR when you see <laughs> one. So, but yeah, the, the, the horrible headaches I got from Red Dog back in the day was not fun. <laughs> um, but uh, but Red we would dog, yeah. That is a throwback. Oh, it's a throwback. So we would drink craft beer though. So we I think yeah you know, maybe at the time Sierra Nevada was really getting popular. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my all time favorites is Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, and, and to this day that beer is still quint quintessential, just a great craft beer. Um, and we we would drink Newcastle or Sammy Smiths, and you know, we would look for imports too. Mm -hmm. So anything that was imported or craft. Dead Guy Ale, you know, Rogue, all that, all their beer. Mm -hmm. um, that was just, it was fun to experiment. Like we're experimenting with music. You experiment with trying different beers out. And that's, that's really where kind of that mindset got started. So there was a uh, brewery back in the day called the Barrel House Brewing Company. You're probably too yeah, young to remember. I don't know yes, that is. Yeah. No. So that had us, that, so we're not the first ones to do this concept. Barrel House had, was before their time. They had done this 20 years ago. They had a stage, they had a brewery, they had great food. It was down in OTR. Mm -hmm. And uh, eventually, uh, I don't know what happened with the business. They, they went out of business, but um, they had some of the best beer I've had. So all the people that are, I'm 43, so all the people, I mean, I got a sound guy that works here. He used to run at the Barrel House. You know, people that uh, around my age remember that venue. And if you're in the music scene, you remember going there to either play or watch a band and drink craft beer. Yeah. You know, which it was awesome. So when we, we were all, we're all IT guys that started the brewery, and we, we got bored with our um, day jobs. And uh, IT is a, a great career to be in, but for um, creative people like us, it kind of sucks your soul. Oh yeah, away from you. So um, so we we said, uh, what do you want to do? And, and about five years ago is when the brewery scene was just getting hot. You know, there were um, Christian Moreline had been around for a little bit, Mount Carmel. But you start to see, you know, Ryan Geis and Madtree, they were creeping up, like, who are these people? And then Braxton went into the business. And so we put together a business plan and we wanted to open a music brewery. So, yeah, and, I love and, it. And make it a venue. Like you said, this is a true venue. So, I mean, we could do a ticket event here or not. All our shows are, are usually free, um, are typically free. So very little we ticket, but, um, but yeah, we just wanted to make it accessible for people to come watch live music. And we try to keep that um, music um, at an elevated level. The musicians yep. have to be top notch. Um, you know, it, it's in the beginning, you know, it's like, oh, I just need this band or let's book this cover band. But now it's like, we're, we're drawing in acts that are touring regionally and nationally. Yeah. So, well, that's, I mean, it's, it's insane. Just, just to think of a, a brewery slash venue. Do you ever see it turning mostly into a venue versus a brewery? We're actually working on it a little bit. So we're doing these things called um, After Hours Live. Mm -hmm. uh, and so these shows, with, which it will be a ticket event, because at, at some point you got to spend some money on these talented right. national acts, and they're going to charge you more. Mm -hmm. So, But we're still trying to keep those ticket prices reasonable. So we're, what we're doing on um, December 29th, um, we're bringing in a band from New Orleans, uh, Nick Casarino and his band. 
Um, they're a combination of a bunch of other bands, and they, they put together this jazz, soul, New Orleans funk band. And it's a three piece. And uh, so tickets are 10 bucks, and you can come here. It's going to be a Sunday night, so it's December 29th. We thought, Mm -hmm. That's probably a good weekend to do it, even though it's a Sunday night. I think a lot of people will still be off because of New Year's and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, come out and see a uh, banging show for, for 10 bucks. Well, love it. Love so, it. Yeah. I love that you guys, speaking of events, speaking of venues, I yes. love that you guys, you know, you, you clearly host a lot because it is a venue. It's nonstop. Um, the best one, in my opinion, that's coming up, it's this <laughs> Sunday, <laughs> The fretboard burger throwdown, first Cause, annual. Because you are the burger boy. I, I, I mean, that I want to know how. I know. I want to know what. I want to know all about the burger boy. We, we can talk. <laughs> we can talk off camera about that. The people know. I'll, I'll do. A, we can maybe do a full sit down someday. That'd be good. But the burger throwdown this Sunday. Yes. It's, and you guys have been saying first annual, planning on doing it more than once. Yeah, I would love to do it if we could do it twice a year. I think it'd be great. But at least annually, um, we got started. Our partners down at Street City Pub, they've been uh, uh, they're a customer of ours, but they've just been great partners to work with. They were really excited about it. Um, Chef Sean came up with the uh, the idea and said, "Hey, you guys need to do a burger throwdown in your place." And we were like, "Well, why? Like, why are you know like why? Okay, that's cool, but why our place? Why don't mm -hmm. you do it at your place?" He said, "No, like." You're a you're a centralized location where you're it's neutral, right? We yeah. serve beer, mm -hmm. and, you know, and we have smoked out here our kitchen, but they serve barbecue. So we don't we don't do burgers here. And he said, man, you know, these are very popular in other cities. Um, and I said, have, you know, have we done? Has anyone done any burger throwdown here? I've seen mac and cheese throwdown. I haven't seen a, I haven't seen a burger throwdown. So yeah, um, we're real excited about it. So we got I think it's either eight or nine participants to come in and. Mm -hmm. um, uh, cook burgers this week. It's twenty five dollars a ticket. Yeah. Um, the the draw really is is that you get to sample burgers from all these places, and they're going to go all out with you know oh, yeah. crafting an awesome burger. And, and and I mean you're 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 telling me I've been talking to all these <laughs> chefs the yeah. past few days, and they get the, the the way their eyes light up when they're talking about the types of you know concoctions they're making just for this event yep versus you know some people they're they're doing their their standard burger they always serve yep. which is great because you know if ain't broke don't fix but they're getting these other ones are getting so creative you know i was talking to craft craft burger bros yesterday yep and they were you know they gave me a little hints of some of the stuff and i actually guessed it right now on the head oh it sounds like you guys are gonna be some like fretboard beer cheese or something on your burger and they're like yeah yeah we're going to <laughs> so i mean cool. And, and all that other stuff. So it makes me super excited. And honestly, you're silly if you even kind of like burgers. You know, it's all you can eat. You know, sliders. Yeah. Right. right. And try, I mean, if you can eat more than you know, 15 sliders, kudos to you. But like, this is the event where you get a chance to try out all these other different restaurants from some of the best uh, chefs in the city. Yep. Um, yeah. I'm and excited. really get to cast your vote to see who is the best. You know, outside of my vote, which is probably going to be a little more weighted because, you know, I'm me. But, um, <laughs> uh, but I mean, you knowing the list, who, sure. do, you, who do you think is going to be, you know, one of the top contenders? I think, well, Sean, Sean's involved. I think, I mean, he's a great chef. I think I, they, they won... I'm trying to think, I think they won best burger in the city beat one. And right, so, but the, yeah. okay, the pause, so, pause before you keep going. So I think Sean's gonna be. Good. I think Sammy's is gonna be. But, but Sean is not. He's not actually gonna be the chef. So I interviewed. I, I oh, talk, I talked with I, one oh, of his okay. chefs. So at, he's all right. He, he's he's standing back. He he. Sean Erickine, chef at Prime Cincy oh. and Street City Pub. He he likes to think he's the top chef in the in the, in the book. So he's like, I'm gonna step back. So no. <laughs> So nobody else has to lose I to me, right? See, this is yeah. new. this is news to me. So, so yeah, um, my first, the first guy I interviewed, uh, Wade Lefever from Street City Pub. Okay, he's the one that's gonna. He's making his own concoction of a burger. You know, using you know a lot of the same stuff that food that foods that they source at Street City Pub though as well. Right. So, um, I'm excited to see what they do. But like any anyone else that you're thinking is might be a top person. Well, I you know our our. Again, you know, we have such great customers and partnerships with these these restaurants. I think Sammy's always does a killer burger. Yeah. And they're right here in Blue Ash. Yeah. I mean, um, they, they have I, a big, you guys have a big presence there, too. Yeah. And we got a great presence there. We we brew the beer for Sammy. So we, we brew Sammy's Red Ale. It's exclusively for Sammy. So we don't. I, just, that, I had no idea that yeah, was Yeah. We thing. do not distribute that anywhere else. So that's and Sa that's very important to Sammy himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so he's he said, hey, because you 
you know, you got beer on tap. I mean, this is, he always takes care of us. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I love it. So it's a good partnership with him. And then, you know, I'm really interested in trying out Bill Yanks is going into Hamilton. So we're opening up our second 100%, location. 100%. Our brewery in Hamilton is going to be opening in December. So it's really, another, yeah, it's another like prep. this year, December. Yeah. So it's another fret board establishment. That's, that be is a, interesting. A I was just in Hamilton yeah. yesterday, so might have to swing back up again just yes. to check out Billy Yanks and all that stuff there. Billy Yanks, if you guys are familiar with, you know, Incline Public House um, and Jefferson Social, the same owners, same guys yep. organizing that are open in Billy Yanks. So I'm excited to see what burger they have to offer because yep. I love the burger at IPH. You know, when I mention I do theater right. at the Incline, we yep. always go across the street. I'm always getting the burger there. Uh, it's a top notch one. I would definitely recommend it. Yeah, the cafes are great. They're they're good people. Uh, known them for a long time. We used to play at Jefferson Hall back in the day. Yeah, yeah. When they were when it was Jefferson Hall down in, in OTR, that was our that was our stage, man. We played there every I love Tuesday. That stuff. So and then they moved to Newport, and then we played there. So now it's Jefferson Social. They don't do bands there anymore. There we go. <laughs> so cool. So just to round this off too, yes. you know, this is all for a good cause as well. Yeah, you that's know, that's the important thing. Here. Tell me about. You know, why Envision Children? Why that nonprofit? You know, they partner uh, with Sean and Street City mm -hmm. on many things. So we were very just open to saying, hey, let's let's work with Envision on this. They've got it. They've got um, you should go check out their website. They, they they do great work. And we thought, man, if we can raise some money for Envision, this is it's a it's an easy way to ra raise money putting some food pack into people's mm -hmm. bellies. Uh, everybody's throwing in something. We're going to donate a pint for every, you know, dollar on, or I'm sorry, dollar on every pint. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, you're going to give Envision Children a pint of I'm beer. I'm going to give, uh, yeah, <laughs> yes. Every dollar somebody yes. gets. That's, yeah, so I'm going to give a dollar per, per pint. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So I mean, something to give back. That's, that's something I want everyone to know here, yeah. too. You know, all, the, the tickets are 25 bucks. You get all you can eat sliders, and you get to vote, and every dollar of, a pint that you buy at Fretboard goes to Envision Children. All $25 of your ticket go to Envision Children. And not, so none of these restaurants are making any money off of this. Yep. So it, it, it makes it even more of a cause. Like open up your heart a bit. You know, if, you don't even, if you're a vegetarian, show up, give your 25 bucks and drink some beers with friends. Like that's really <laughs> it. Open your heart, please. Yeah, unfortunately no Impossible Burgers that I know of. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. I, I, that's the thing. I talked to Sean. Uh, and I was like, hey, uh, are there going to be any like veggie options at this thing? And he's just like, uh, yeah, absolutely not. What are you talking <laughs> about? And that, that's when I'm like, he is a true red blooded American, you know, burger maker. And that's why yeah, maybe uh, their burgers are so good. I, so. I was going to say my, you know, my sister is gluten free. She always asked me about gluten free beer. And I'm like, I, I don't I don't know what that is. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> what no is such that? Thing, you know, so. But, so yeah. tell the people where they can find you guys. Yep. Uh, and, you know, whether it's locally, online, what have you, and just rounding off about the event too. Absolutely, so uh, our website is www.fretboardbrewing.com uh, slash on dash stage is where you can go ahead and visit and see all the, um, the events we do. So everything that's event wise, we put on there. We put it on Facebook. Our marketing dot guy does a great job putting on Instagram. So check out our Facebook page as well. Like us on Facebook. Um, the other place you can, you can get us is, uh, you can actually pick up the beer at Jungle Gems. We have 34 uh, Kroger uh, locations that we're in. We're also in Fresh Market as well. And then a slew of other places around town, including, you know, uh, like one of my favorite places to go is, is, is White Oak Marathon over yeah. by LaSalle. Yep, yep. Yeah, with all the taps, that's a great place. They're good partners of ours and, and great customers. Um, but yeah, a little bit of everywhere um, you can get us and then bars and restaurants as well. Love it. Or just well, come into the tap room. Come into the tap room. Yeah. It's, it's a killer spot. So cool. Got Jim. Appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. See you guys Sunday. Cheers. An LRD. Yes. <laughs> did I hold my pinky up when I did?